The condition of a train's air brake system must be known before the train departs from its originating terminal. A properly performed initial terminal air brake test is vital for safe train operation and for the personal safety of the train crew and the public. The Code of Federal Regulation, Part 232.12, states when an initial terminal air brake test is required, what needs inspecting, and how the test shall be performed. This program will explain how the initial terminal air brake test is made. Whenever it's necessary to perform this test, remember safety is always of first importance. Make sure your train or cut of cars is properly protected and blue signal requirements are met. There are two methods of performing this test. When the test is made from a road locomotive, the air brake system must be charged to within 15 pounds of the regulating or feed valve setting on the locomotive as indicated by the brake pipe gauge. But to not less than 60 pounds as indicated by an accurate gauge at the rear of the train. When the test is made from a yard plant or yard locomotive where the pressure is adjusted to 80 pounds, the system must be charged to at least 65 pounds. Let's examine this method first. Before coupling the Timo test device to the train, blow out the yard air supply line. It's essential that the supply line is free of dirt and water to keep from contaminating the air brake equipment. Now close the supply line. Now that you have a clean, dry source of supply air, your next step will be to attach the Timo test device to the supply line and then couple the device to the air hose coupling and open the angle cock. Remember, the device must be coupled to the same end of the train to which the road power is going to be attached. With the device handle in the charge position, charge the train to within 15 pounds of the setting of the regulating device controlling the yard air, but not to less than 60 pounds. As the train is charging and you're walking and coupling hoses, check the following. Make sure all angle cocks are open. This is when the handles are in line with the pipe. Also make sure there are no obstructions in the air hose, such as ice, dirt, or kinks. Check end air hose arrangements for crimped hoses. Also check the air hose gaskets and make sure they're not torn or worn to the extent that they could cause leakage. Make sure all cutout cocks are in the open position. Remember, these cocks work just the opposite of angle cocks. When the handle is in line with the pipe, the cock is closed. Make sure all cut-out cock handles are at a right angle to the pipe. Also, make sure that all retainer valve handles are in the direct exhaust position, pointing straight down. Another important item to be checking at this time is leakage. Make sure you correct any leakage you discover as the train is charging. Observe the handbrake on each car. Make sure there's free slack in the chain and that brake shoes are not up against the wheels. However, at some locations, the transportation department may have special instructions for the train crews to apply and or release handbrakes on train until the locomotives are attached to prevent unexpected movement of the train. Make sure all handbrakes are released before the train departs. After allowing sufficient time for the train or block of cars to charge, Pressure on the rear car must be within 15 pounds of the regulator controlling the yard air, but not less than 60 pounds, as indicated by an accurate gauge at the rear of the train. Now that the train is charged to acceptable limits, move the device handle to the apply position and make a 15 pound reduction. Now, move the handle to the lap position. After waiting one minute for the air pressure to stabilize, time the brake pipe leakage for one minute. Leakage must not exceed five pounds in one minute. If leakage drop exceeds five pounds in one minute, it is again time to start finding and correcting leaks. If leakage did not exceed five pounds, your train is within limits. Now, make a further reduction to a total of 20 pounds. At this point, the gauge on the Timo test should read 60 pounds. With the handle of the test device in lap, adjust the time control knob for sufficient time to permit inspection of each car with the brakes remaining in the applied position. Next, move the device handle to the release position and proceed with the inspection of the train. At the time the train is inspected, 
Observe the condition of piston travel and all parts of the brake rigging, such as brake shoes, levers, brake beams, and so forth, correcting any discrepancies, including leakage. It may be necessary to note repairs needed to be performed after brakes release. The power brake law states, in all cases where the initial terminal air brake test is performed, all body mounted 10 by 12 pistons having travel of 9 inches or more must be adjusted to 7 inches. Those with less than 7 inches must also be adjusted to nominal 7 inches. On brake cylinders other than standard 10 by 12 single capacity brakes, the piston travel must be adjusted as indicated on the badge plate or stenciling on the car. Upon completion of the application test on all cars, the brakes of all cars must release and an observation must be made to determine that all brakes have released. At the initial terminal, if the air brakes on any car cannot be made to operate in accordance with these test procedures, the car must be set out of the train. No train can leave the initial terminal with inoperative brakes on any car. Now that we've covered the method of testing using a yard plant and Timo test device, let's review the procedures for testing using a locomotive. Remember, safety first. Before starting test, make sure that the train is properly blue flagged. After attaching the locomotive, which will be the road power, and with the automatic brake valve handle in release position, the train's air brake system must be charged within 15 pounds of the regulating valve or feed valve setting on the locomotive but to not less than 60 pounds as indicated by an accurate gauge at the rear of the train. The next step will be to give the engine man the signal to apply the brakes. He'll make a 20 pound brake pipe service reduction. After brake pipe exhaust ceases, he'll change the brake valve cutout valve to the out position and wait one minute for the air pressure to stabilize. He will time brake pipe pressure leakage for one minute. Brake pipe leakage must not exceed five pounds in one minute. If brake pipe leakage is within acceptable limits, the procedure is then the same as with using the yard plant. All cars in the train must have the brakes inspected to make sure they have applied. Piston travel must be within limits of the power brake law. Seven inches to nine inches for 10 by 12 body mounted cylinders, six inch maximum on truck mounted cylinders, or as specified by badge plate or stenciling on the car. After all cars have been inspected for application, a signal is then given to the engine man to release the brakes and an observation must be made to determine that all brakes have released. This observation can be made as the train departs. Now, let's briefly review the steps for making the initial terminal air brake test. First, charge the brake system to within 15 pounds of the pressure at the head end and not to less than 60 pounds at the rear of the train. Next, determine this pressure by an accurate gauge at the rear of the train. After establishing proper pressure at rear end, make an application. Wait for one minute and time your brake pipe leakage for one minute. Leakage must not exceed five pounds in one minute. If leakage is within this limit, you must walk the train and observe that all brakes in the train are applied. After inspecting that all brakes apply and that piston travel is within limits on all cars, you then restore brake pipe pressure and observe that all brakes release. Remember, at the time that the initial terminal air brake test is given, all brakes in the train must be operative. Also, it should be noted that whenever it's practical, all cars that have been pre-tested prior to the road power being attached should be left on charge with ground air. If this is done, then the only test needed after attaching the road power would be a brake application and release test of the air brakes of the rear car. If cars are taken off charge for more than two hours, an initial terminal test would be required. The power brake law provides for fines for violations of these rules. Every employee who is responsible for the testing of trains must know the rules and test procedures and comply with them. Take pride in a job well done. Your train is departing.